Well, my name is Pastor Daniel Williams from Redemption Church in Delray Beach, and I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas. It has truly been a joy to walk with you through biblical accounts of the Christmas story this year, as we've taken 12 days to just think, ponder, and meditate on Scripture together. And this is the last day of the 12 days of Christmas video devotions. And if you missed any of these videos and would like to watch them, just feel free to go to our church website at redemptiondb.com. Well, on our last day together with this type of format, I want to encourage you and let you know the story doesn't end. That's right. Although there aren't that many passages to describe the birth of Jesus, we do see in the Bible that there are many more passages of Scripture that describe Jesus' life and teaching. And so today I want to read to you this last section from Luke chapter 2, verse 39 and 40, as Luke concludes the Christmas story and tells us that Jesus returned to Nazareth and grew up in the favor of God. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 39 and 40, it says this, And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. You know, one of the great things about the Christmas story is that it doesn't end with Jesus being a baby. Luke wants us to know that Jesus grew in strength and in wisdom and and the favor of God. A simple reminder of this fact is that this is only chapter 2 in this eyewitness account that Luke writes about. You see, Luke would write more than just uh, Jesus' birth. He would actually give an account of what would take place in Jesus' life. And so would other gospel authors when explaining who Jesus is is and what he was all about. We would actually have Jesus' very own words and teachings written down for us to understand and to get to know this Messiah. I love Christmas and how every year we actually have traditions, rituals, rhythms of grace to celebrate in this season. And I know that we all have different types of traditions that make Christmas special for us and our families. And I'm glad that you've chosen to include Jesus and His Word in this Advent season. I pray that this would be a ritual that you would always include in your Christmas celebration. But I also hope that reading and studying Scripture daily with us uh, would be something that's important to you throughout the year. That you would develop a routine and discipline to study Scripture for your own self all year long. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as a one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We are told from Scripture that we should do our best to study the word of God. You see, what makes Christmas season so great and spiritually beneficial for our lives is taking the time to focus on Jesus through His Word. Uh, This was the focus of our time together these last 12 days, but this doesn't have to end with Christmas. The principle of pondering, meditating, and studying Scripture doesn't have to end with this season of Christmas. You see, Jesus grew up, and Luke tells us there's more. There's more Scripture to study together. What amazes me is the fact that Jesus did grow up, and he did speak for himself. In fact, he came as a rabbi, which literally means teacher, one that would speak about the kingdom of God and give us insight into eternal truths from God himself that we can base our lives on. Jesus said in John 6, 38, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus not only taught the ways of the kingdom uh, with words, but with power, his life. And we can read about how he healed people, how he had compassion, how he did miracles and cared for people and and actually was the manifestation of God's love for us. You see, because his teachings weren't a try harder and do better message, but one that proclaimed good news to all people, that we could enter into the kingdom of God by grace not based on our own behavior, but based on His righteousness, that He would preach this kingdom of God and say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He would tell us that the ways we have eternal life and become spiritually alive are by faith, by trusting in Him as our Lord and our King and our Savior and God. In fact, John 1.12 would say, but all who received Him, who believed in His name, He gave their right to become children of God. 
You see, Jesus was able to save the world from their sin by being perfect in a sinless life, dying on the cross for our sins. And he was this perfect atonement, this substitute where God poured out his wrath on Jesus and he gave us his righteousness. It was this great exchange on the cross and the reason why he came. And three days later after the cross, he rose again, demonstrating the power of God to us all and how he has the authority over sin, Satan, and death. And so my prayer for you is that you get to know this Jesus, this Messiah, this anointed one, and have him the Lord of your life, that you would continue to walk with him, follow his ways. This is what really makes not only Christmas special, but our entire lives special. And so may you have a Merry Christmas, and may you continue to celebrate Jesus and his gospel all year long.